The Note tool, which looks like a white arrowhead, is the equivalent of the Direct Selection tool in other programs. The Note tool is a very important tool because it allows you to manipulate points and Bezier curves directly. Let's see what it's all about. When you first select the Note tool, if you choose a shape, it might appear that nothing has happened besides just selecting the shape. That is because shapes in Affinity Designer have to be converted to curves before their nodes can be manipulated. That option can be found down at the bottom in the contextual menu. I just tap convert to curves and then we can see the node tool is active over here and we can see the four nodes that make up the circle. Tapping on a node will allow me to drag that node with my finger or the Apple Pencil. You can always two finger tap to undo. Once I have selected a node, I can also drag the Bezier handles to control the curvature. Holding one finger down while dragging a Bezier handle will allow me to manipulate that handle independently. I can also use the node tool to add more nodes just by tapping on a curve or line. If I want to select two nodes at one time, I can just tap on one node and then hold another finger on the screen and tap another node. Then I can drag these nodes together. I can also hold just one finger on the screen and drag a marquee around the nodes that I want to select. If I have a node selected and I'm dragging that node, I can hold one finger on the screen to constrain it. If I'm dragging a Bezier handle and I hold two fingers on the screen, my drag will be constrained to a straight line. Now let's look at the context options at the bottom. First, we have some node type options. I can change the type from sharp to smooth to smart. Smart will try to guess what you want the node to be as you go along. I prefer to have either sharp or smooth though because I haven't found smart to work super well. There's also a trash can which will delete a node if you want to get rid of it and still keep the shape one continuous whole shape. Now if we hit this little arrow on the right we'll get some more contextual menus. Here you can see break. Break will actually separate the nodes so that the shape is no longer one continuous shape. You can see right here how there's no blue line around this part of the shape because the shape is broken. I can close that again by using the close button. I just select one of the points and click close and it will then make one closed and continuous shape. If I select this smooth button, it will try and smooth out my shape by adding nodes around the edges to make the shape as smooth as it possibly can. If I have two separated points like these and I have them close together, I can select them and choose join and they'll become one node. I haven't yet been able to figure out what this reverse command is for. It doesn't seem to do anything. The four small options at the bottom are all snapping options. They let your curves and points snap to each other in different ways. I haven't found that they're particularly more useful than the regular snapping options though, so I normally just leave them off. That's it for the node tool. The next class will be about the corner tool.